Hello everybody, this is SMK here, and today we're going to be talking about all the transformations! Yay! This is another transformation video, and this time we're just gonna try and rate them, uh, you know, based on what we know. So, the first race is obviously the Saiyan race, and is obviously the new transformation Super Saiyan 3. There's really not much to talk about with this transformation, other than the fact that what we know so far is that it makes your hair longer. It's just the Goku uh, Super Saiyan 3 hairstyle plastered onto your custom character. And as far as we know, it doesn't give you any stat buffs, but we're pretty sure it might. It should, given the kind of game Xenoverse 2 is trying to be. And given Dimps is president with transformations, especially in the first game, which did offer some stat boosts, but they were very negligible. But as far as from an aesthetic point of view, it's Super Saiyan 3. What did you expect? You know, they weren't going to do anything super f special, fancy, awesome for custom created characters. It's just Super Saiyan 3, your, you know, your own character. You know, like, yay, finally. <laughs> um, other than that, I mean, I do like the nice little differences they have between the genders. Uh, females having regular, uh, their, you know, their usual eyebrows, whatever one you pick. And the bang is on the other side of their head instead of on the same side as the males. So that's pretty nice. Other than that, I would say because this is a pretty bog standard transformation, like, you know, expected, uh, I would maybe give it a either a 3 out of 5 or a 4 out of 5. And yes, by the way, we're going, I'm ranking this by, you know, out of 5. Rating this out of 5, excuse me. Um, so, I, I, like, unless something significant changes, like, by the time the game comes out, like, when the game is out, and, like, oh, Super Saiyan 3 is somehow so shocking it does, like, some crazy stuff to your character, I'm putting it at about a 4 out of 5 right now. Um, that's how I feel on it. Alright, and then the next race is the humans, and you know what transformation they got? Power Pole plus Nimbus. Now, this was a form I was not expecting, nobody was expecting, and... A lot of people are kind of pissed about it, and it's mainly because it stems from the aesthetic point of view. People are mad that it doesn't look intimidating, that it's just, oh, you got this fluffy cloud, and like it bothers people, and personally, I don't really understand that. I don't really get that. that that's almost like a kind of immature and childish attitude to have, I would say, towards it, because it's really just an awesome throwback to Dragon Ball, to Kid Goku. Um, you know, it... it like, how could you not like that? Unless you really just, like, are a fan of Dragon Ball Z and not the original series. Um, but not only from that point of view, but it, from a gameplay standpoint, it offers very unique stuff in the sense of, oh, I get a completely new set of combos because I am now using the power pole. And I get access to um, more reach. So not only do you get new combos, more combos for humans, but you also get longer reach, which is really important to any fighting game. Very important. Um, especially now, because it's not just locked to special moves, because in the first game, Power Pole was just, you know, two special moves. But now, it's also possible to have as part of your melee move set, which is very cool. Now, of course, it's only for humans, but that's alright. That's, that's pretty awesome. So... I'm just curious what they're going to do, like how the Nimbus is going to change up gameplay, if anything at all, because it can't just be an aesthetic part of the transformation. So hopefully um, hopefully that part of the uh, form does have a gameplay uh, aspect to it, that it does, you know, just like the power pole, add something, because otherwise people, you know, they might be pretty upset about it or something, I don't know. Um, so in my personal opinion, it gets a 5 out of 5 because it's a surprising uh, factor. It's not something that's expected and bog standard in the sense of like, oh, if they got a buff Roshi form, or if they just were given S uh, unlocked potential e exclusivity, uh, even though it was a lot, everyone was able to use it in the first game. So uh, that's great. Like I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It's an awesome throwback to Dragon Ball and Kid Goku and. Some part of me hopes that maybe Kid Goku will get uh, that, uh, will be in the game and have that move set. You know, will have Nimbus and the Power Pole. That would be a really awesome way to put Kid Goku in the game. They could justify having that character in the game just because of that, you know, uh, uh, special move set they, they made for human custom characters. But anyway, alright. So then the next race we have to talk about are the Namekians. Um, the 
you know, they got the giant form. Now, giant forms, I'm not going to try, I'm not going to talk about this for too long because uh, I'm going to do a whole video about it. But basically, in my opinion, it's it's a great and awesome surprise that we got it um, because the last time we had any sort, sort of like giant characters were in uh, the Takichi series. And in particular, Lord Slug had a giant form. Um, and I wasn't really thinking they would do that for the sake of balance, because giant forms, generally speaking, in fighting games, or giant characters, I should say, they are either on one end of the extreme or the other. They're either super good, to the point of being stupidly broken, or they are super bad, to the point of being s just stupid awful. <laughs> um... So it just sort of depends on how they find that middle ground, I guess, for them. Uh, because it's either the choice of giving them armor all the time, or giving them breakable armor and then balancing some kind of speed there depending on the kind of uh, armor, if any, they have. Um, and that's sort of the problem that they have, uh, because they're not going to be able to get grabbed. But um, they have, they're huge, and they, like I said, if you're going to be huge, you're going to need some kind of way besides blocking, to be able to get through attacks. And armor is the logical thing to give them, but then how much armor do you give them? And, like, do you give them armor at all and then just, like, make them have armor during attacks, you know, instead of, like, all the time? You know, so there's a lot of things they have to consider when they're trying to balance this giant form. Um, both for, for all the all the gameplay types, 1v1, 2v2, and 3v3. Um, it's possible it might only be good in 3v3. It's possible it might be ass in 1v1. It's possible it might be... Um, Ass in 3v3 and amazing in 1v1. We don't know yet. So, until we know more about this form, because we've only seen 5 seconds of it, I'm just going to give it a 3 out of 5, personally. Because, one, it while it did surprise me, it was sort of the expected thing they would do, because um, that's, what they were, that's, what they, that's what they were known to have. And it would be a really kind of fun gameplay thing for them to do. Um, so that's just what I think. 3 out of 5. I'd give it like a 5 out of 5 like humans if I knew more about it. We don't really know a whole lot about it. Just like, well, humans we know just enough to give it 5 out of 5 for me. Um, if we had seen anything besides just them grabbing someone like Lord Slug does in the movie, then maybe I would rate it higher. But 3 out of 5 because we've only seen like 5 seconds and barely anything of them. Unlike the power pole and human... I mean, the Power Pole and Nimbus transformation. Excuse me. Um, okay, so the, the next race is transformation you need to talk about is the Freezer race with the Golden Form. Golden Form was expected, I would say, and I think people who thought we were going to get more than one Freezer race form were kind of had high expectations. Like, you set your expectations way too high. Um, mainly because, again, they gave you all the parts you needed to make those forms in the first game. They're not just going to then take those parts away and lock them behind for a, like a form two or form three or even form four of your custom created character. They're not gonna just have like a customizable transformation set specifically for Frieza race characters. They're not gonna do that. They're not going to have the time to do that. They're not going to then piss off a bunch of people who want their base form to look awesome as hell. So, and then there's also the other implications of how do you handle someone who has those parts in their base form, and then how do they transform into the next form anyway if those parts are then... You know, it, it, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, it would just be like, huh, you didn't really transform. So the golden form is a good way to solve that in the sense that, okay, it's just a recolor, but it's modeled after Frieza, and it's the most recent form, it's the most powerful recent form that they have, and it's the easiest to implement as well. Um, I also like how it gives them, in terms of gameplay, speed, boosts, and it also changes their key blasts to being, you know, faster. Kind of like how Frieza's, you know, been known for having really fast key blasts. So it's very cool. Um, I would say it's a 4 out of 5 transformation for me. Um, if, like I said, unless, like, until the game comes out, this could change. I mean, this could change when the game comes out, and I've played with it um, before, but it's... I think it looks great. I think it looks great, and I think it solves all the complications of trying to implement Frieza's other forms for the custom-created characters. And I don't care if it's quote-unquote lazy, as some people like to call it all around the world, but it's not really lazy. It's more just solving a problem that would be created in if they allowed the other forms to be possible, and if they tried to 
come up with that. And who knows? Maybe they even tried that already, and they just settled on the golden form because logistically, it is the most feasible feasible form to make work uh, perfectly. Anyway, the final race is the Majin Buu race with their pure form. I'm gonna go quick go through this pretty quickly here. Um, pure form, I think. It's pretty meh, alright? I will side with people that say it's pretty meh. I like the potential of the fact that it will change their combos, um, but we haven't seen much of that. The only new thing we've seen them that they have is this, when they're dashing, they roll up into a ball like Kid Boo. And I'm kind of concerned about that, like, where, y if you can even hit them out of that, because it's a moving hitbox. And moving hitboxes are generally pretty scary in any fighting game, uh, because they're usually pretty hard to beat. Uh, Unless you use a special move, of course. But with how dashing was in the first game, I'm a little concerned, even if they did fix the dashing in this game. But I would say because it's not really anything super special, the pure form, it should get like a 3 out of 5, maybe even a 2 out of 5, because they really should have tried to keep your ca custom characters' clothes um, just to differentiate them a little more from Kid Boo. But uh, yeah, those are all my thoughts on all the transformations. I'm I'm glad that they that we know all of them. Obviously, my opinions could very well change when the game comes out. But what are your thoughts on them? How would you rate them? Sound off in the comments below and let me know if you disagree with anything I said. Also, feel free to comment about that. And if you like the video, obviously like the video. And if you want more content and you like to hear more of my thoughts about things and everything, then just subscribe. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.